Just, uh, just wanted to share a conversation I was having this morning with uh, my trainer. Big shout out to Richard Farley Jr. He's a beast. If you're not following him on Instagram, I highly recommend it. At Richard Farley Jr. So I want to get into this quick conversation. It's Monday morning. Uh, came out of the gym. Had this great conversation with my trainer this morning about, uh, like, you know, like, what do people really want? Like, you know, deep, heady, you know, Monday morning conversations at the gym. What do people really want? And... Richard's like, you know, people want to look good and they want to make money and they want to have great relationships and they, you know, like, I'm like, yeah, I think it's, I think it's all of that and more. And yet most people are dissatisfied with how they look. Most people don't have enough money and most people don't have the health and vitality that they want. Like, it's fascinating to me that, you know, we're all striving for these things that we say that we want. And yet like the divorce rate, you know, you should Google this, but like the divorce rate in the U.S. is like 50%. Uh, I was told it was 60% in California, and if you Google it, it's 72% in my town. 72%. Like, can you imagine like walking down the aisle and like looking at that person and saying, we have like a 28% chance of making it. Like, it's crazy when you think about it. Now, you might be saying, Tom, like I, I refer to you as like my business coach, and here you are talking about this stuff. Like, Pay attention because there's, there's a method to this madness. We're all striving for these things that we want. And yet many times when we get there, we're not happy. We're not satisfied with it. And I'm just convinced that the vast majority of people have not taken the time to really ask themselves the tough questions. Um, I was reflecting on it because it's going to be coming up pretty soon here. Um, 17 years ago when I met with uh, my mentor, a guy named Mike Vance. Thank you, by the way, for all the hearts. Lots of love to all of you. And I love the new waving. Uh, that's super cool on Instagram. Um, so I was flying out to go see this guy. And I was in a place in my life where if you, if, good morning to you. If, if you looked at my life, you know, financially, uh, my business, my impact, you know, wife, kids, like, like it was like I was rocking, right? Like multiple homes and, you know, working and making money and creating an impact. And I was like, you know, 28, 29 years old, making millions of dollars a year. And I reflect back on that time and like, and the superficial outside stuff was, wow, that guy is like really, really, really successful. The reality was, yes, this is the final project. Uh, The reality was I was miserable, right? Like, like everything in my life was going left, but my heart was going right. And, and it just, I, I go back to the conversation I had with Richard this morning. Everybody wants to look good. Everybody wants, you know, the, you know, to make money and to be successful and to have an impact. And they want a great relationship. And yet in the process of doing many of those things, the doing side of it, most of them are miserable. So I'm flying out to Miami and I'm, I'm literally with my journal out writing down all the questions that I wanted to ask my mentor. And I remember the first question I asked him was, okay, so you've worked with, you were Walt Disney's right-hand guy, right? Walt Disney's right-hand guy for like nine years. He was the first dean of the Disney University. He launched Orlando, like the geodesic dome. Like, you know, he was working directly with Buckminster Fuller to create the geodesic dome that we've all seen if you've been to Orlando. Um, You know, just this unbelievable, like he mentored Steve Jobs. He was friends with Mother Teresa. He, you know, spent, you know, two decades working as sort of a business coach and and life coach, if you will, for this guy, Jack Welch, who went on to become the legendary CEO, Jack Welch. So I'm writing down, like, you spent all these time with all these people. Like, what did they all have in common? Like, what was it that made these men and women tick at such an extraordinary level? And, and it was great. Like, so when I landed, I had like 30 questions I was going to ask him and still have that journal. Like journaling is an important thing. I hope you do that, whether it's on Evernote or, you know, like old school books. And I remember getting to the hotel and, you know, of course, Mike is this larger than life character. You know, he's like six foot four. He's got this giant hair and he's already got a bottle of wine and, you know, Cuban coffee ready to go. Cause that's how he works. So we're like sipping Cuban coffee and we're drinking wine and it's like nine 30 in the morning. Right? Like, you know, he was all about the creative flow and juices. So I opened up my journal. I'm like, okay, Mike, I want to ask you the first question. Like you, you worked with Walt Disney, you mentored Steve jobs, you mentored Jack Welch, you know, you worked directly with mother Teresa like, you know, you, you invented the salad bar. Like you've, you, you've touched so many things that us on the planet probably had no idea that you were a creative force behind. What did all these people have in common? Like, what was it about all these people? And he starts laughing and he's like, 
Tom, they've all answered the five questions and they live by it. What's your next question? And I, I stopped and I paused and I was like, wait a minute. Who cares what all these other questions? I'm like, well, what, what do you mean the five? Like the five questions? I'm like, I've, I've been studying you for years. I've read all your books. I've listened to your audios, like, you know, like tapes. Remember tapes, right? Oh, dude, Brian, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Um, hello from SMU. What up, Joe Farkas? You guys got to give me the scoop. My sons and my wife and a bunch of their friends are all checking out SMU College today. Love you all. What, there, there's Michael Ferry. Good to see you, buddy. Love you, man. So, so here we are. And he says to me, they've all answered the five fundamental questions that I live by. Them. And it was so like, like, oh, five questions and they live by them. Like, well, what are the five questions? And he said, you know, because he always had like this like giggly, talked really fast personality. He was like, the first question they all, they, they all understood is, they all understood who they are and what their purpose is. And I was like, shit, could you, could you start with anything like less deep? Like, who are you? What's your purpose? He literally looked at me and he's like, why are you on this planet? Why do you exist? Who are you? What's your purpose? Why do you exist? What do you want? Like, like, why are you here? And, and by no means, guys, did I immediately just like go, oh, well, oh, like here it is. I was like, okay, that's the first question I need to tackle. I'm like, what's the second question? He's like, second question is like, what are your God-given talents? Like, what do you do? What do you do that makes you feel good, that impacts others and moves the needle in any aspect of life, business, relationships, whatever else? Like, it was like, it was like, what are your God-given talents? Like, what do you do that's effortless? And I remember, like, I, I had that one pretty quick. I was like, I can create, I can coach, I can contribute, and I can connect, right? C4, like, that just became my thing. Like, I love coaching. I love the creative side. I love helping people solve problems and complexity. Like, I, lo I thrive on that. I love the contribution side, right? Instagram, face-to-face, one-on-one meetings, making phone calls, whatever it is. I like to contribute to people's success. And I love to connect the dots, right? Like, over the weekend, like someone, you know, hey, I need like the most important, you know, RESPA attorney on the planet. I can track that person down, get a hold of Mitch, connect him to the person I need to connect to. Like, like I love that. So what are your God-given talents? Like, think about it. Like, like, what do you do that like you would do for free because it's just who you are, right? It's just, it's who you are all day long. So look at the first two questions, right? Question number one, like, who are you? What's your purpose? Like, that's a big Monday morning question. And then question number two was, hey, what up from the UK? Uh, I'm coming to you, by the way, in the UK next January and March. I can't wait. I'm all over. Like, like I need to get way deeper into all my European peeps. So those are the first two questions, right? Third question, though, was, I still think one of the most important ones, which he said, they had all answered the question, what do they value? What are your values? What do you value? And I remember asking him, like, okay, I've done exercises like this before, like the hierarchy of like, you know, is it this or this and this and this? And you kind of, you know, chunk your list and get it all together. And then you kind of create your rules for what those values. So I was, I was comfortable with that. But I said, well, why does that matter? Like, why did, why did that matter to Mother Teresa? Why did that matter to Steve Jobs? And he said, because, now think about this for you, right? If you're clear on what you value, like what matters to you and in what order, then guess what? When somebody offers you something, it's super easy to make a decision. When somebody offers you something, it's super easy to make a decision because you know what you value. You with me on this? Like if somebody offers me a book or education, it's a no brainer because like, you know, like I'm, I'm constantly seeking new knowledge, right? I want wisdom, right? So, so it's a no brainer. But if somebody's like, um, let's think, uh, you want to go to a baseball game? I'd be like, not really, right? It's just not really my thing. Like if you said the NBA, I'd be all over it. Um, but like a simple example, like if somebody offers you something, is it an automatic yes or is it a no? And anytime you're wavering on that decision, right, it's because you're not super clear on what you value. And he said, remember, the more successful you become, the more people are gonna be coming at you. Let me say it to you again. The more successful you become, the more people are gonna be coming at you because you become a conduit to what's possible, right? Whether it's them calling you because they know you're the best listing agent on the planet or the best buying agent or insurance agent or lender, you know, or leader in your, in your company, right? They're gonna come to you and they're gonna go, I got this idea, what do you think about this? And you and I, we have to know like who we are, what we stand for, like what are our God-given talents? Like what, what do we know we can do and then what do we need to outsource 
and delegate to others. That's a big part of this distinction. Like, who are you? What do you stand for? What's your purpose? What are your God-given talents? Only do that shit. Don't do anything else because doing anything else is a waste of your real talent, right? And whatever you're doing, you're probably doing horribly because it's not your thing. You with me on this? Like, don't talk to me about paperwork and organization. It ain't my thing. I understood that. But then what do you value? And then having those values in front of you so you can make decisions quickly because that's the real key. He said, all these people operate at such a high level. They got to make decisions really fast. You don't want to be in the situation where you're like, I'm not sure. I don't know. I got I to gotta sleep on it. I don't have to sleep on anything. I either know or I don't. Yes, no. Boom, move on. End of story. So that was question number three. Then he said, all right, it's 10 years from now. It's 10 years from now. And, and for you and I, like, hey, what up, Elisa? You just text me too. Um, what up, Elisa? So it's 10 years from now. 10 years from now. And if you want, like, if you're young like me, go 20 years, right? Go 20 years. It's 20 years from now. How is the world experiencing you? Now, you got to get, guys, I'm 29 years old at the time when he's asked me these questions. And I am in a life transition moment. Like, I am vulnerable to change. You with me? Like, I'm thinking... Look at this amazing life that my wife and I and our children, like what we've created in the family business and all this stuff. But like my heart was going that way. Like my values were going this way. Like my, my God-given talents were going this way. Like my purpose was going this way. And when he asked the question, like it's 10 years from now, it's 20 years from now. Like how is the world experiencing you? I remember writing on that one and getting super clear on what I wanted. And yes, in my case, the natural thing was that I needed to leave and go do my own thing, right? To, to follow my heart, to trust my intuition, right? Like, how is the world going to experience you in 10, 20 years from now? Like, like horrible example, but, but poignant. Like, if you haven't taken the time uh, to read the poem called The Dash, The Dash, and it's normally written at someone's, or like spoke about in somebody's eulogy, and it's this really, really powerful poem. Dogs in the house, case my wife is walking. Yes, boys, yes. <laughs> if you ever wondering if this is really live, Vader. Thank you, Vader. Lord Darth Vader. Right? The the dash and the Google the Google death clock. I'm not gonna walk over the dogs. The Google death clock is an absolute mess. Hey, Vader. Vader. By the way. Vader is in the cone of shame. The cone of shame. So the, the Google death clock, what it does, guys, is it basically tells you this is how long you have to live and this is how many seconds you have left in your life. So you better get off your ass and do something. It's super, super motivating, right? So let me give you the last question. Good morning, Maria. The last question is, who would I already be if I was there? Who would I already be if I was there? Yes, in case you guys are wondering, this is live and I'm at my house and I'm hanging out. Who would I already be if I was there? And this one hit me really hard because I was like, huh, we're so busy talking about like, what do I have to do? You know, what do I have to do to be successful? What do I have to do to get more listings? What do I have to do with this? What do I have to do with that? Like, how do I do this? How do I do that? And that one hit me because I recognized that the being choice is far more important than the doing choice. Like, ask yourself, like, when you're at your best, who are you being? Like, how do you think? How do you talk? How do you walk? How do you act? It's like your psychology, right? It's, it's what you say to yourself. It's your focus. It's the way you move your body. It's the questions you ask yourself. Um, like, I got that much later on, um, that it's, that's, that's really the makeup of your psychology, which, by the way, can be changed through cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, motivation therapy, and others. So here's the five questions, ready? You wanna really, 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 really be happy? You wanna really, really, really achieve all those things that you want, and at the end of the day, experience more joy, right? More happiness, more satisfaction? Answer the five questions. Who are you? What's your purpose? Like, who are you really? What's your purpose? And two, what are your God-given talents? What are your God-given talents? Like, what do you do, again, that's effortless, that you love, that impacts others, that makes a difference? And by the way, that could be like calling expired listings and working for sale by owners, and it could just as easily be working first-time buyers, and it could be managing and coaching and developing others, and it could be like, I don't know, like making tables like this or, you know, doing videos, like whatever. Like, what, what is it for you? And then, what do you value? 
what are your values and is it listed out? Um, can you articulate it so you've got some way to process through when something is recommended or suggested or, you know, like a, it's like a filter. You know what I mean? Like it's a filter to be able to say yes or no and to be able to do it very quickly. And that's the key because we've got so much stuff coming at us. We've got to be able to make decisions fast. And then question number four, it's 10 or 20 years from now and how is the world experiencing you? It's 10 or 20 years from now. How is the world experiencing you? And you guys got to be really clear on this. Time flies. Like it goes by really quick. Like yesterday, they're like, here is your son. And like the next day, here is your next son. And it was like that. And now they're both in Dallas, right? And one is looking at going to college and the next one's right around the corner. And it happens like that, my friends. You know, we totally overestimate what we can accomplish, right, in one year. And we dramatically underestimate the value of 10 years, let alone 20. So what do you, like, what do you really want? How's the world gonna experience in you? And then the last question is, who would you already be if you were there? Who would you already be if you were there? And again, like, you know, making the being choice. Like people are like, you have so much energy. I choose to be energetic. It's just something I do. How do you stay so positive? I, I just choose to be positive. Like, and you know, well, like I, no one cares. <laughs> That's the thing I get. Like no one cares if you're tired. No one cares if you're having a bad day. No one cares if you didn't get any sleep. Do you get that? No one gives a shit. Like no one cares about your stories and excuses. That's the conversation I've been having with myself forever. No one cares. So just go out and do your thing. Like for me, go out and do the God-given talents. Contribute, connect, create, coach, make a difference. Like just keep doing that and you're gonna win. Does that make sense? Who would you already be if you were there? Who would you already be if you were there? Yes, I'm seeing a bunch of you saying, will you please put up those questions? I will absolutely post those questions for you guys. Um, so <laughs> clearly I could have timed this better. <laughs> saying, uh, saying goodbye to Maria, who's gonna go walk the dogs. It's Monday. Take the time to answer these questions. By the way, it took me about six months, about six months, realtor dad, I love that name. It took me about six months to answer all these questions. And then I made one of the most important decisions of my life besides asking my wife to marry me, right? I made the decision to trust my gut, follow my intuition, and go for it. And you should do the same. All right, that's all I got. Happy Monday. Wishing you a powerful week. Book lots of appointments. It's March Madness. This is the time for you to be winning. No one cares if you're tired. No one cares if you can't find inventory. No one cares. Get off your ass. Get to work. Follow your plan. You with me? You were smart enough to write your plan. Be dumb enough to follow it. That's my coaching advice. Lots of love. Hi, I'm Coach Tom Ferry, and for nearly three decades, I've helped, dissected, analyzed, coached, trained, and developed many of the most successful real estate professionals around the world, not just to have an extraordinary business, but to have an extraordinary business and life by design. If that's of interest to you, I absolutely recommend you subscribe.